Good morning and welcome to another blog where you find me on the banks of a venue that I've never fished before. This particular venue is located just on the outskirts of Lincoln and it's run as an exclusive syndicate by Tom Denton. Now we don't know a great deal about the venue other than in the past it produced some absolutely colossal fish to over £40. I've been a member since the beginning of May and this is my first ever look at it and I must say it looks absolutely fantastic and I can't wait to get into the fishing on here. I've had a good walk around trying to take in as much information as I can but unfortunately there's no other anglers present at the moment for me to talk to so I'm coming in really blind because I've not even spoke to Tom about the fishing on here. I know there's some lovely carp in here but I don't really know about what's been caught and which of the going swims but from looking at the information that's available to me we can split this lake into two halves. There's a gravel bar that runs straight down the middle. It's really shallow on top at the moment. I've had a wade down that bar and the one side of the lake looks really, really shallow and I've not seen any signs of fish there. In fact, the only signs of fish that I've seen whilst I've been walking around was tight to the far margin um, where there's been quite a few fish seen in the snags and underneath the trees. So that's the area that I'm probably going to target. Right, there's two particular swims that have taken me fancy on the walk round and the first of these is down the bottom end towards where the wind is blowing. Although there's a lot of trees down there, underneath one of them I've seen two or three really good chunks which have got to be close to £30. And the swim down there, which is nicely tucked away, feels very, very carpy. I don't think you can drive your car to, so I'm guessing it probably doesn't get fished as much as some of the other areas on the lake. But at the opposite end of the scale, and the swim where I'm going to start, is probably the most popular area on the lake and I'm guessing it's called the point because it commands an awful lot of water and it's right out in the middle of the lake and most importantly it commands all these trees that are on the far margin behind me and as I was walking round right behind those trees there's an awful lot of fish probably 15 or 20 good chunks so it's always good to start on a new water where you know there's fish I've got 72 hours ahead of me so if I don't catch after sort of 48 hours at least I can move I know there's fish elsewhere and at the moment, as I said, there's nobody else on the water. So, you know, I've got lots of options available to me, but that's where I'm going to start. So let's go and get set up on the point swim, and then I'll talk you through where I've put my rods. cast about with a marker float and although there's quite a few decent features out in front of this swim what I've decided to do is just put all three of my rods pretty much over on the far bank that's where I've seen the fish they're all around those those trees that are over there and if you look straight down the three rods at the moment you'll see that the lines are not too far apart what you've got over there is a, is a thick set of trees that have fallen into the margins and it slopes off from about two foot right behind the trees down to about six foot just in front and all I've done is stagger all three of the rods to different depths. I've got one in roughly about two and a half, three foot, one in about four and a half foot and the other one in about six foot and then all I've done is gone round to the far side and just baited up with a liberal amount of boilies, probably about four or five kilos all along the front of those, those trees. So there's a decent spread of bait out there. I know there's a lot of fish over there. All I've got to do now is just sit back and wait for them. Front. Well it's all about confidence for me today because I don't know a great deal about the venue. I'm using a rig that I've used on countless different waters and it's pretty simple. It's just a braided hook link. Today I'm using Avid's captive hook link and I've taken all the outer coating off so I'm just left with a nice braided inner core. I've got a size 6 hook that's line aligned. I've got one of the little line aligners placed over the eye of the hook and then I've got a single 18 mil bottom bait to complete the setup. Really simple. I've taken it to countless waters and caught with it, so I know it's going to work here today.
it's always nice to get your first one from a new venue. It looks like being a nice 20 pounder, so yeah, lovely. Well, there's my first fish from the lake then. And I'm sure you'll agree, it's an absolute cracker. So, the rest of the stock are like this one. It's gonna be very interesting fishing on this place. This is worth mentioning, you can buy all sorts of different gadgets nowadays for marking your line but still after all these years I'm still using little bits of electrical tape. I always find it stays on there for a lot longer than a lot of these paints and different markers that you can buy. And uh, it's also, because it's so sticky, it withstands a lot of the rain as well. If I could pick the conditions to be on a lake, it would be these because we just had some lovely westerly winds blowing. It's now really muggy and we've got loads of cloud in the area, low pressure, light drizzle. This is prime big fish weather, it really is. You know, I've been fishing quite a few years now and as you, you progress in your career, you pick up on little signs and these conditions at the moment are absolutely perfect for the biggest fish in the lake to get caught. So it wouldn't surprise me if tonight or tomorrow or the next few days that one of the lads that's on the lake ends up catching something a little bit special. I just hope that it's going to be me. I often hear lads talking about whether it's possible to single out a bigger fish and of course if you see him you can definitely do it but tactics wise it is difficult but there's definitely in my mind in a way certain things that you can do that can increase your chances of catching the big ones. The most important thing is finding out the track records of the fish because a lot of big ones in venues have got the, the same sort of places that they get caught from, the same swims and areas that they live, you know, even on really small waters like Withy Pool, I remember the big one in there living in this one particular snag. And then at the opposite end of the scale, you go to the Orient, where 20 years ago, the bulldozer used to get caught only from Girardeau Bay. So, you know, big fish can be very, very territorial. So obviously that's the first thing that I'd always do, is look at the track record. You can also look at other different characteristics about big fish as well. You know, they, they tend to get caught at certain times of the year. When we used to do the five years ago this week, 10 years ago this week, 15 years ago this week in carp talk, you'd often see the same fish getting caught each week, year after year. And you know, if, if, you, if you do your research into your fisheries and, and look at the, the behavior of the big ones, you'll often see that they only get caught at certain times of the year from certain swims. So trying to just pinpoint those little pieces of information can definitely help you. Other little things that we can do to improve our chances of catching big ones is, put an awful lot of bait out there, you know, the baiting pyramid these days tends to get sort of overlooked by mainly people looking at techniques and tackle and things like that, whereas, you know, the old methods, something like the baiting pyramid that Rod Hutchinson talked about many years ago, the more bait you put out there, the better chances you've got of getting those bigger fish into your swim, so instead of just fishing for one bite at a time with little stringers and bags and, and what have you, put some bait out there, don't be afraid to stick a few kilos out there. You know, today I've put probably four or five kilos along that tree line. It definitely works. Another thing to look at as well is the size of baits because these days you tend to see a lot of guys using really small baits, you know, eight millers and 10 millers and um, 12 and 14 millers. I go to most waters these days using really big baits of 18 or 20 or in some instances 22 mil. I've got no problem with using those size baits because the size of the mouths on, on some of the carp that I'm fishing for are quite large. You know, you've only got to look in the margins of some of the lakes that I've been fishing and you've got giant snails in them and fish are always feeding on these types of items so don't be afraid to, to use something a little bit larger than perhaps what everybody else is using. It certainly gives you a better chance of, of singling out the bigger fish in my mind. At the same time, don't be afraid to step up your end tackle. Use larger hooks rather than really small ones. Use larger hook links instead of tiny little fine things. You know, we're trying to fish for, for bigger carp here and certainly today I'm trying to catch fish from really sort of snaggy areas so I've no problem at all in using size 2 or size 4 or size 6 hooks or whatever. Everybody nowadays seems to be preoccupied with using really tiny stuff and, and fishing for bites is what I'd call it. I've got no problem at all in trying to use tough tackle and, and making sure that if I do hook something I've got a better chance of getting those fish out of there. At the end of the day though, catching big fish when you're 
static fishing like we all tend to do, you are reliant on a little bit of luck, but there are definitely little things that you can do that can increase your chances of catching those big ones. The longer I've been carping, the more I'm able to recognise when perfect conditions have arrived, and last night it really was prime for big fish. Probably 15, 16 degrees during the night, very difficult to sleep and a lovely westerly wind blowing which is still blowing at the moment but down there I've got two absolutely whacking great big fish which for my second night on the lake I really couldn't have asked for a better start and the one that's in the sling down there we'll have a look at in a minute which is a huge 36 pound common so you know let's take a look at him. Well you can talk tackle techniques, bait etc as much as you want but every now and again we all need a good dose of luck and on my second night on this lake I think I've got certainly the biggest common in the lake but potentially the biggest fish as well so I've got the XL recovery sling and this beast just about fits in it that is a magnificent fish it really is and coincidentally last night I was talking to a lad who fishes it quite a lot who'd caught every single fish in the lake by this one I think it's the common known as Arnie and at 36 pounds I've been really really lucky second night on the lake awesome Imagine this fish has got a few stories to tell. It's got loads of barnacles grown all over it. It uh, looks like a really ancient fish, but 34 pounds, mega, absolutely mega. Second night on the lake, a 36 pounder and a 34. Bingo. Can't ask for more than that, that's absolutely mega. 